let's get started on tip number three, sound over visuals. In our opinion, audio is the most important element in video editing. If you can't hear it, nobody's gonna watch it unless, of course, it's a visual only video. Several years before YouTube, yes, those days really did exist. Like today, websites provided information to read and internet sites streamed music and talk shows, but internet speeds were not fast enough to stream video to most home computers. As we waited for internet speeds to improve, YouTube emerges onto the scene with a clever solution, video streaming with adjustable video resolutions. This meant that viewers with slow internet could play videos at low resolution, while viewers Viewers with fast connections could view at higher resolutions. In this, we discovered that it didn't matter if the video was so pixelated we could barely make it out, as long as we could hear it. Views were piling up for videos that could be heard, but not necessarily seen. Our conclusion? Sound is more important than visuals. Fortunately, Gary, the father and husband of our bunch, loves working with sound. From the very beginning, he's edited all our sound in most every video. It's no small feat when working with amateur equipment. An added complication is much of our filming is done outdoors, where certain days require navigating wind noise. Directional microphones have been our best option for run and gun filming and audio recording. These are available for most smartphones and professional shotgun microphones can be used with action cameras with an adapter. When video is imported into the editor, the clips have varying levels of volume. Every editor has a visual sound meter to gauge volume output. Most video clips require volume adjustments. The objective is to create a consistent output level. We may be required to adjust volume up or down to meet this level. Using the gauge in the sound editor, voices are set to level 0 dB, and music, when played by itself, is set to level negative 6 dB. Keeping the sound levels consistent for the entire show is important so that the listener doesn't have to adjust their volume up or down to compensate for uncomfortable peaks and valleys in the show's audio. The problem arises when we upload our videos to different social media platforms. Each social media company re renders the video to match their storage requirements and sound, especially background music, sometimes will automatically increase in volume during this re-rendering process. The music levels may be perfect in the editor, but after the upload, the voices may be drowned out and the communication lost. This issue is compounded by the viewer's smartphone, computer, or television, which all have varying blends of music and voice audio levels. As mentioned earlier, setting music to negative 6 dB works well when only music is playing. But when you have background music underneath a conversation, then we set the volume low enough that it is barely audible. This usually ranges from negative 21 dB to negative 31 dB. It is better to err in setting it too low than too high. When editing sound, the most common audio tool we use is the loudness control. Loudness is different than what we mentioned above. It is in essence adds presence and volume to the background sound. What's the difference? Presentation! Once this is added to the clips, we correct any spikes in volume. As you can imagine, based on the type of video content our family produces, we have several types of construction noises that spike and must be turned down. There are two ways we manage this, by simply adjusting the volume manually or dropping a limiter effect on the clip, which automatically lowers the peaks. Hearing construction sounds is essential to the content and message of our videos, but sound must add to the story, not assault the ears. A sound should never startle a listener as it interrupts the enjoyment and flow of the show. Keeping or adding natural noises from the environment in the background fills out the scene. Time-lapse clips do not have sound, so we use music, sound effects, an interview, or a combination of two or more of those. Complete silence creates an awkward feeling, so we use it only when we want that effect, usually during a joke. Adding sound effects can help add to the scene. Our rule of thumb is that the sound effect should not be noticed. It needs to be turned down so it's barely heard. When that sound effect is subtle, it enhances the scene rather than distracting from it. 
A good set of studio speakers is vital for hearing the correct volume levels. We have found that headphones don't work as well as speakers to approximate the sound that the viewer will hear. These are the basic sound adjustments we make for each video we produce. Getting the sound right can be challenging. There is plenty of in-depth information available on the internet if you would like to delve deeper. So that wraps up tip number three. Hope you're having a fantastic week and we will look forward to seeing you next week for tip number four, which will be on equipment. Thank you.